Welcome back to the vlog. We're going to be at Bankers Casino for a 2-5 meetup game. Also, on the following day, we're going to have a $365 tournament with $1,000 bounties on the poker bloggers. So it should be an interesting weekend. It's a little bit of a drive for me, so I better get on the road. We'll see you down there. We're starting up this 2-5 meetup game. I buy it for $500. Sit down at the first table. Nothing much happens. There was a, probably about three or four really small pots that I was involved with, basically taking blinds and stuff like that. It ended up being up $50 before moving over to the second table. And the second table had a lot deeper stacks and a lot more action. These players were playing before we actually came in today, so I imagine that maybe they have been there all night long. I don't know. Maybe they came up early in the morning. But anyway, the game is much, much larger at this t particular table. And I was there for maybe two or three hands before this hand occurred. A player opens up under the gun for 55, very large sizing. Usually this indicates a very strong hand. It's folded over to me and I look down at ace-king offsuit. Normally I would three bet this hand, especially with a player making a standard size open. But since he made such a large open, I'm a little bit concerned that he might have a big pocket pair. And I don't know, I don't want to flip for stacks right now, first hand out of the bat. So I just put in the call and decided to see what the flop would bring. We're heads up, heading to a flop with 117 in that comes 10-8 deuce with two spades. So it doesn't really hit my hand, but I do have a backdoor flush draw and two over cards. He makes a standard continuation bet of $80. This particular flop should hit my calling range a lot harder than it hits his raising range. And the way he put his chips in really made me feel like he's just taking a C-bet stab at this thing. So I'm just going to put in the call and see what he does on the turn. Turn card comes is a good one. It's a six of spades. So we pick up a flush draw. We still have our two overs and our opponent checks to us. Now I'm debating whether I should go ahead and bet this, trying to get him off whatever hand he has, or take my free card. I came really close to betting, but I decided just to check this one back. I figure if I'm ahead, I'm way ahead at this point, and I don't have to really worry about too many cards. River card comes as a jack of diamonds. My opponent assembles a bet of $160 and puts it in the pot. The jack on the river isn't the greatest card. If you had something like ace jack or king jack or some other form with a jack in it, I'm now beat. But if you notice what I just noticed, the way he put his chips in, he grabbed them, he was a little bit more emphatic with it, like, get out, this is my pot. Usually that indicates weakness as a bluff, and I got a great bluff catcher in ace king. So take a look at it again, see what you see. All right, here he goes. Watch how hard he puts him down. You see that? Yeah, that's a sure sign that he is weak. So naturally, I snap call. And when you know, I'm right. He shows down ace-queen, and I take it down with ace-king. 
So I just move over to the third table. Very first time we're doing a $20 bomb pot. We got eight players sitting at the table, so it's 160 in the main. Flop comes out ace, eight, deuce. I'm in the big blind. I take a peek down at my hand and I have a 10. I haven't looked at my other card yet, but I know with a 10 in my hand, I do not have anything I can bet at this point. So naturally I put in the check and wait to see what the action is. It ends up checking all the way around, which is a good sign, especially when I look back and I saw that I, my other card's an ace. So I'm going, I might actually have the best hand. Turn card comes is a 10 of clubs. What a perfect card. Player in the small blind bets out for $60. Now, bomb pots are very tricky. Anyone could have anything. But top two is definitely worth putting in some money, especially when it brings a flush draw and a straight draw at the same time. If someone has two clubs or a hand like jack nine or even nine seven or some sort of combo draw like a queen queen nine of clubs or something, they're going to be calling. So I make it 210. I might even be able to go a little bit bigger than that. But I thought that would get the job done, maybe disincentivize anyone sucking out on me. It goes to the player in the cutoff and he makes the call for $210. I'm really putting him on some sort of flush draw. If any club comes up, I'm just going to puke and uh, check it over to him and let him steal it away from me if he's stealing or whatever. The player in the small blind thinks about it for a long time and also makes the call. So we got a pretty good pot of brew in here and we're going to head off to the river with $790 in the main. I got about 430 left in my stack. So if any kind of blank comes up, I'm just going to ship it. River card comes. Is a six of diamonds. Pretty good card. The only thing that gets there is someone with seven nine. And I don't think they'll be calling with seven nine. So first person checks. I bet. The other player thinks for a little while. I'm not sure what he has. I think he just missed his flush draw and he ends up folding. The player in the small blind really goes into the tank for a while. He goes, man, that pot is so big. And it's only going to cost me $400 to call you. Uh, I'm going to have to make the call. And he puts it in. I show him my top two. He actually turned tens and eights. He took the beat very well and uh, mentioned uh, how did I get so lucky. And I said, well, it's all in the lucky Zeus chip. And then I handed him one. And he went on to win like the next five out of six hands at the table and got all his money back plus some. I, on the other hand, was pretty quiet until I moved over to the next table, where I sat down under the gun with Ace Queen of Hearts, open for a raise to 20. I get two callers, and it goes back around to the player in the big blind who raises to 60. Uh, I can go either way with four betting, but being suited and having position on the, uh, the aggressor, I decided just to put in the call. I know it incentivizes the other people behind me to call, but, you know, I can't beat a pair of kings right now, so why bloat the pot any more than it is? So we're going to head three ways to this flop with 202 in the pot. Flop comes out ace 10 deuce with a 10 deuce of diamonds. My opponent to my direct right, who is a pre-flop aggressor, leads out for $60. I really don't think he has too much. I think he probably has like a pocket pair, maybe jacks or perhaps kings. I figure I'm either way ahead or way behind if he has something like ace king or pocket tens. I just put in the call and now the player behind me puts in a raise to $200. Now when they do this, I'm thinking they could either have a hands like ace 10 and I'm totally screwed because I didn't four bet or they could have something like ace blank of diamonds where they have top pair and a flush draw and want to get a little extra value. Or maybe they're just trying to figure out what the heck we have. Anyway, the player to my right realizes that he probably can't beat an ace at this point, and he decides to fold. Me, on the other hand, I can beat a lot of aces, and I don't think they have ace-king because they would have put in a uh, raise preflop. So the hands I'm putting them on are ace-blank of diamonds, maybe something like ace-jack, maybe ace-queen tie, 
And my worst fear would be they have something like ace-10 and I'm really screwed in drawing to three outs. I put in the call looking for a safe turn card. And when it comes to 10 of spades, it's less likely they have a 10 like ace-10 now. More likely they have ace-blank of diamonds. Therefore, I don't want to give them a free card. I decide to shove. Now, they only have about $260 behind. And I figured if they have something like ace-blank of diamonds, they're probably going to end up calling. Now, I also thought about this jamming on the flop. They only had 260 back. That's probably the correct play. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, make a comment down below. Would you have flatted and then bet the river like I did? Or would you have flatted and checked? Or would you have just stuck it in there on the flop and hope for the best? Anyway, the player ends up making a excellent fold. They actually showed that they had ace jack offsuit. They did have the ace of diamonds in their hand. They just wasn't suited. And they laid it down, saved themselves $260. But at least we won the pot. The very next hand, I didn't even have my camera rolling, still putting chips away. I look at 8-4 offsuit in the big blind. I get a free peek at a flop that comes 5-6-7. That's when you know you're running good. It gets checked to me, I check, and someone bets $20 behind me. I get a call from the player on my right. I check raise to $80. Only the player to my right puts in the call. The turn card comes is a 10 of spades, really a complete blank. He checks to me. I figure he has some sort of pair and straight draw. So I bet 140. He quickly folds, so maybe he didn't have as much as I thought he did. Anyway, take this one down. Sorry for no cards on the board. It's time for another table rotation. There you can see Andrew Locke grinding away in C2. Over here on this next table is where I'm seated. That's the floor man JC in the background. And Kenichi's over on that far table in seat two. We got another two hours to go and a full board of people waiting. Hopefully we can get them all in. So on my fifth rotation, I sat at a table. They were playing the seven deuce game and playing with the bomb pots and such. And basically, I didn't get anything. I didn't have much to play. I didn't even get seven deuce. They were more like eight threes. Uh, anyway, end up losing about $200. This uh, paying people off for their seven deuce bluffs. Made our last rotation back to the table where I won a bomb pot previously. Here we're doing a bomb pot again. I told everyone that this one will make the vlog. So if you want to be on the vlog, just go ahead and win this pot. So here we go. I look down at ace queen, flop comes, deuce six five. Not an ideal flop for ace queen. Naturally, I'm going to check when it gets to me, but the action pursues and there are some bets and some calls. And granted, I have a backdoor flush draw with an overcard, but on bomb pots, I'm not going to get involved with anything like that. So it just hits the muck and we get to film the outcome of this one as you can see the player uh, under the gun bets out 100 player uh, two to his uh, left puts in the call and so does the player to my right the turn card comes as a nine of spades completes the obvious straight draw and flush draw first player ends up checking next player puts in the check and the final player also puts in the check makes me wonder what they have River card comes is a four of diamonds. First player leads in with a stack of chips. Looks like about $115. I'm pretty sure the next player said that he folded. I'm not sure exactly what went on or how he illustrated, but he had his cards in his hand and he, I guess he just says, yeah, I fold. He never threw in a chip. Final player puts in the call, shows that he called down with four deuce with bottom two pair and he ends up winning the pot the player's name is john he's the one i gave the lucky zeus uh, chip to and he just wanted to show that uh, that little chip brought him a ton of luck and he had a very good evening well things are starting to wind down and uh, it's time to call it an evening as you can see we still had three full games going at the end of the night as you can see that I have a $500 chip on my stack. This is the first time I've ever played in a game where I had a $500 chip. 
we are, or at least I am, extremely hungry and very tired. Uh, John gave us a recommendation of a restaurant to go to. It's called Gino's. It's uh, maybe about uh, 10 minutes away from the casino. Anyway, we headed over to Gino's for dinner. Uh, the restaurant closed at 9 o'clock. They were kind enough to stay open for a little bit longer than that so we can get a meal. The food was excellent. If you're ever in Salinas and needed a good Italian restaurant, I highly recommend Gino's. And if you're just there to play some poker, Banker's Casino is the place to be at. The next day we had a $365 bounty tournament where all the vloggers had $1,000 bounties on their head. I happened to be at a table with my new friend John and uh, we got a little picture taken here before we uh, set out to battle. My goal for the tournament was to last longer than uh, Kenichi and Andrew Locke. So I only filmed the hands where I could be busting out. This one I'm in the big blind. I had seven six diamonds, nobody raised. We went five ways to a flop and I flopped the straight. The blinds were 200, 400 at the time. I checked it and the player on the button ends up betting 1600. I'm the only player that put in the call and we saw a turn card of an eight of clubs. So now um, it's very likely that he has something like three eights. I checked to him again. He does bet it and he bets it like he has three eights. And I decided just to go ahead and check raise all in. With the bounty on my head, people are going to be calling me down left and right. And if they have a chance to win $1,000 and they got trips, there's no way they're going to be folding. And there's no way they should be folding. They have a great overlay. Anyway, he puts in the call. I show my 7-6 for the straight. He shows jack-8. So I just have to dodge the board pairing or jack. And... That's what we get. We get a blank king on the river and we double up. So at the first break, I got a pretty good stack. I'm the chip leader at my table. So I don't have to really sweat the bounty hunting as much right now. Now we just get to play some good poker. I keep on chipping up after the next break. Again, one of the chip leaders. Well, they put the prize money up on the board and it's a little bit of a flatter uh, payout system than I'm accustomed to. I mean, the difference between first place and, say, fifth place is not that great. Usually it's a little bit top-heavy. So it's a more incentivized for people to chop once they get to a certain position because you're really not gaining too much for playing it out. We're down to the last two tables. I open for a raise to 20,000. The player next to me shoves all in with ace-king. I snap call with two jacks. And we see a flop that comes jack-high. Turn card comes, puts up a diamond draw. My opponent does have the king of diamonds. I tell him that he is definitely drawing oh. live. Oh. <laughs> Here's another pot where my bounty was at risk. I go all in. I get called by a lady on the button. Um, she's been playing a fairly tight game, so I'm a little bit concerned. Everybody else folds out. I have ace-queen offsuit. She turns over king-queen of diamonds, so we're in pretty good shape. And then the flop comes five, six, five with two diamonds. So we're sweating the diamond draw. It bricks out. So we ended up doubling up through her and have a fairly good stack at this point. I've been putting a lot of pressure on the shorter stacks. This player's in the big blind. I shove all in. He thinks for a long time. He wanted to show the, uh, the vlog that he's folding a powerful hand. He's just trying to make it to the money. He has king, jack, diamonds. It was a good lay down. I did have an ace. This hand ended up being the final hand of the tournament. I'll let you hear it. <laughs> Come on, Zeus! Is that it? Yeah, see, now you can get more money. Just king. Show the ace. See the hand, see the hand. They got it over there. 30, 70. So after that hand, the chip leader at the time, who had just a little bit more than me, decided that, yeah, he will take the offer that people were offering him for a chop. And it was for 13 ways. I know it's 13 ways. That's a lot, a lot of people. Normally, I don't chop when there's that many people. But I am a host of this meetup game slash tournament. So I would feel it would be bad etiquette if I was to be the holdout. So I gave everyone a very favorable terms for their chop and I could have definitely, well, I definitely gave up a lot of equity by doing so. But it was a really good event, really good time. 
met a lot of nice people, and gained a few subscribers along the way. So all in all, great trip. Really appreciate Bankers Casino for hosting us. It was a fabulous event. I think they really enjoyed it and they got a lot out of it themselves. I believe this is probably the busiest weekend they ever had. So I'm sure they're pleased with the outcome. So speaking of outcomes, I'm sure you're all interested in how my weekend went. In the live games, I won $1,400. And in the tournament, I cast for 2000 And if you're ever down in the Monterey Salinas area and you want to play a little poker, I highly recommend stopping in to Bankers Casino and tell them Doug sent you, or at least that you watch my vlog. And if you missed this meetup game, we're having another one down at Hustler Casino on August 6th down in L.A. We'll be with uh, Fish Poker, Andrew Locke, and myself. The game's going to be a 2-3 no-limit game. Buy-ins from $100 to $500, so a little bit friendlier game. Not too much stress on the bankroll. Hope to see you there. That's Saturday, August 6th from 1 to 7 p.m. You can sign up on Poker Atlas. Until then, good luck at the tables.